Hello and welcome to Science Monitor, your favorite weekly news program on science, technology, invention and innovation. I am Ashwarya Kapoor. In today's episode, we will talk about the innovations on Millets event organized by CSIR to commemorate the International Year of Millets. We will also tell you what was the budget provisions of science and technology for the next financial year. There will be lots more news, but let's begin with the headlines of this episode. Focus on s and development in the budget provisions of the Ministry of Science and Technology. Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman made the announcement while presenting the union budget in the parliament. Innovations on Millets event organized by CSIR Laboratories in New Delhi. Technology supporting the International Millets program were demonstrated. Real-time landslide monitoring and early warning system has reduced the risk. The system developed by Amrita University established in Munnar Valley of Kerala is becoming an example of success. And information about the latest activities around the world related to science and technology in the special segment Science Express. On February 1st, Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman presented the country's budget for the financial year 2023-24 in the parliament. With many important announcements, 16,361 crore rupees have been allocated to the Ministry of Science and Technology in this budget. This budget shows the commitment of the Government of India towards the development of science and technology in the country. The special report of Science Monitor on the budget provisions. I present the budget for 2023-2024. This is the first budget in Amrit Kal. Science, technology and innovation are the basis of the progress of any nation. We saw it during the COVID pandemic that every country capable in the fields of science, technology and innovation performed better in the fight against the pandemic. India is among these countries. That is why 16,361 crore rupees has been allocated to the Ministry of Science and Technology in the union budget announced for the upcoming financial year. This amount is 2,000 crore rupees more than the last year's budget allocation for the ministry. Presenting the Union Budget in Parliament on February 1st, Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman announced this increased allocation, which will provide a new platform for science and technology research and innovation in the country. We are implementing many programs for green fuel, green energy, green farming, green mobility, green buildings and green equipment and policies for efficient use of energy across various economic sectors. These green growth efforts help in reducing carbon intensity of the economy and provides for large-scale green job opportunities. For realizing the vision of make AI in India and make AI work for India, three centers of excellence for artificial intelligence will be set up in top educational institutions. Leading industry players will partner in conducting interdisciplinary research, develop cutting-edge applications, and scalable problem solutions in the areas of agriculture, health, and sustainable cities. This will galvanize an effective AI ecosystem and nurture quality human resources in the field. The increase in the s and budget will be used to set up new centers of excellence for artificial intelligence that will conduct interdisciplinary research and develop innovative solutions in the areas of agriculture, health and smart infrastructure. Of the total allocated amount, 7,931.05 crore rupees has been earmarked for the Department of Science and Technology. On the other hand, an allocation of 2,683.86 crore rupees has been made to the Department of Biotechnology. 
and 5,746.51 crore rupees to the Department of Scientific and Industrial Research. Apart from the Ministry of Science and Technology, a budget of 3,319.88 crore rupees has been allocated to the Ministry of Earth Sciences. At the same time, the center has allocated 12,543.91 crore rupees to the Department of Space for India's space programs. However, this is lesser than the allocation made in the last year's budget allocation. It is important to note that the Indian Space Research Organization or ISRO is working on the first Indian human space mission Gaganyaan, Chandrayaan-3 and Aditya L-1, which is the first solar mission. A mission to eliminate sickle cell anemia by 2047 will be launched. It will entail awareness creation, universal screening of 7 crore people in the age group of 0 to 40 years, in affected tribal areas and counselling through collaborative efforts of central ministries and state governments. Facilities in select ICMR labs, Indian Council for Medical Research Labs, will be made available for research by public and private medical college faculty and private sector R&D teams for encouraging collaborative research and innovation. A new pharma program, a new program to promote research and innovation in pharmaceuticals will be taken up through centers of excellence. We shall also encourage industry to invest in research and development in specific priority areas. Considering the importance of the energy and environment sector, this budget has given 3079.40 crore rupees to the Ministry of Environment, Forests and Climate Change and 35,000 crore rupees for green energy transition. In order to meet its environmental protection and reduce carbon emission goals, alternative energy sectors are a major focus for India. Accordingly, an allocation of 19,700 crore rupees has been earmarked for the National Green Hydrogen Mission in Budget 2023-24. Recently, Innovations on Millets event was organized by CSIR in New Delhi to commemorate the International Year of Millets. Union Minister for Science and Technology and Earth Sciences, Dr. Jitendra Singh, who addressed the event, also inaugurated an exhibition on millets and released a desktop calendar. A Science Monitor report on the program. Millets are a major Indian crop with 10 of the 12 known type of millets grown in the country. Millets are common food items in kitchens across India. Millets have complex carbohydrates which are slow to digest and hence have a low glycemic index which is beneficial for blood sugar levels. Millets are also rich in essential vitamins, minerals, proteins and fibers. Besides diabetes, millets are beneficial for people suffering from anorexia and obesity as well. The United Nations declared 2023 as the International Year of Millets at the initiative of the Indian government, which was backed by 72 other countries. Along with the G20 presidency, this initiative by India has been lauded globally as part of its series to popularize millets. CSIR Innovations on Millets event was organized by the laboratories of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research Dr. Jitendra Singh, Union Minister of Science and Technology and Earth Sciences, who addressed the event, also appreciated CSIR efforts and said that after the popularization of yoga globally, it's now time to do the same for millets. We are on track to make up for the last 50-60 years as was being mentioned I think by Ankush. It is also time to realize the huge resource that we had amongst us, 
but which remained underutilized or unutilized. And also for a country like India, which has uh, always faced issues related to food in one way or the other. Just before independence, we had famine. Then soon after independence, in the earlier years, we had the issue of food scarcity. Gradually, we became food sufficient. But we didn't become nutritional. So I think it's also important to understand Overcoming food scarcity does not necessarily mean overcoming malnutrition or undernutrition. When we are into this year of minutes, we have an opportunity, and I must compliment CFTRI. They are very much into this even before the year was announced. At the event, the Union Minister also inaugurated an exhibition on millets organized by CSIR and PL and released a desktop calendar. The exhibition had a display of products and technologies developed by CSIR CFTRI and also by other CSIR labs showcasing the capabilities of CSIR CFTRI in the R&D of millets. The efforts are to take the institute's technologies on millets to various stakeholders at the national level. This initiative of the Government of India will not only increase the consumption of millets in India but also globally while increasing the income of Indian farmers. So we all have heard about millets but it was a part of our uh, traditional diet since Vedic times and uh, unfortunately maybe for the past five to six decades we have uh, our plate has become less and less uh, filled with millets and uh, more of other cereals and many processed foods and uh, today we are rediscovering it and this is probably thanks to uh, the government of India emphasizing especially through um, in uh, 2018 when it was declared the national year of millets and that is when we started rediscovering the nutritional, the health benefits and how safe they are, how good they are for our health and so on and so forth. So indeed, uh, uh, CSER, CFTRI has been working since the past seven decades on millets and other labs too are uh, now looking at millets from various uh, aspects. Organized by CSIR, the event was attended by over 600 participants, including secretaries and officials from various central government ministries, regulatory bodies, directors of CSIR institutes, scientists, industry partners and students. The solutions for community safety being done by Indian scientific institutions have reduced the risk of natural disasters to a great extent. One such example of scientific intervention is the Munnar Valley of the Western Ghats. Amrita University researchers have designed and installed real-time landslide monitoring and early warning system in the landslide-prone area of Munnar with public participation. It has become possible to ensure social security through the system. A Science Monitor report. The enchanting Munnar Valley in the Western Ghats in Kerala is a major landslide prone area of India. The region has recorded several fatal landslide incidents in the past. But thanks to scientific interventions and community awareness, the risk from the natural disaster has been reduced to a greater extent. This has been made possible due to the installation of early warning and monitoring system developed by the Center for Wireless Networks and Applications of Amrita University, which has been working towards reducing landslide risk. This is the world's first Internet of Things landslide monitoring and early warning system based on the machine learning and artificial intelligence integrated system and has been designed in collaboration with administrative authorities, disaster management agencies and the community. The system has been developed and first deployed in the year 2009 in the Western Ghats in Munar in Kerala. 
So today we have more than 150 sensors in Munar and by seeing the success of the Munar deployment, government has asked us to deploy in Sikkim. So we also have a deployment in Chantmari area in Sikkim where there is more than 200 sensors are deployed in, 200, uh, in 32 hectares of land. And in this deployment, what is making it most important is it's the early warning factor because it's easy for you to actually monitor or detect. But how can you early warn and save the life? Real-time landslide monitoring and early warning system uses many sensors installed in landslide prone areas. These sensors collect real-time data on the quantity of rainfall, soil water infiltration, moisture content and soil surface movements. This data is then sent to field stations using the cable network, broadband network, long-range Wi-Fi or satellite network. This data is then transmitted from the field stations to the central control room at Amrita University, where it is automatically analyzed by algorithms using artificial intelligence before being sent to state agencies. State disaster management agencies issue the information after classifying it according to the risk assessment at the regional level, allowing local administrations to formulate a course of action. One of the major challenges which we see in the society is when you disseminate warning, how will the people be able to take the action? That is the first thing Amrita has also addressed where before the monsoon comes in itself, we have several times there is a community engagement. In the community engagement, we train them like a monsoon starts based on this warning, what they have to do as the next action. So before the monsoon comes itself, get ready, pack the bags, what you need, etc. And if you have to move to a different place. Next, if the first level warning comes, this is what the meaning is. It's, second level is this is one. so the community knows that each warning what action but the current disaster management rule says that any warning can be issued by only the state authority as part of management of this system communities were taught how to identify changes in the slopes during monsoon time they were also trained in interpreting the meaning of the warnings issued by the department at the local level, the information is shared using mediums like WhatsApp groups. This has not only helped people take precautionary measures, but is also making them feel safer. Ever since the system was installed, there has been no fatal incident in the region. Since the installation of first system in 2009, sensors at six sites have been installed in the region. On the basis of its success in this region, it is now reaching other states too. The warning system is a prime example of successful intervention of science and technology with public awareness. And now let's take a look at some of the latest developments around the world related to science and technology in our special segment, Science Express. Michael W. Lodge, Secretary General of the International Seabed Authority and his high-level delegation who visited India exchanged polymetallic nodules exploration expansion contract with the Ministry of Earth Sciences, Government of India. Dr. Jitendra Singh, the Union Minister for Science and Technology and Earth Sciences and Dr. M. Ravi Chandran, Secretary of the Ministry of Earth Sciences were present on the occasion. The contract is in line with India's ambitious deep sea mission. This contract was initially signed on 25th of March 2002 for a period of 15 years which later was extended twice for five-year periods during 2017 and 2022. Speaking on the occasion, the Union Minister said that India with its 7,500 km long coastline is a stakeholder as well as a contributor in the exploration and use of marine resources. Dr. Singh expressed happiness that India has been named by the ISA in the category of Pioneer Investor Having Special Interest. 
it is important to note that an amount of 600 crore rupees has been allocated by the government of India for the deep sea mission, which will bring India's oceanic capabilities to the fore. Professor Mukherjee, Director of the Institute of Advanced Study in Science and Technology or IASST Guwahati, an autonomous institute of the Department of Science and Technology and his collaborators Professor Yuri and Atkin from the Shemyakin Ovshinikov Institute of Bioorganic Chemistry, Russian Academy of Sciences Moscow and Dr. Bhargav Kalita from Amrita Vishwavidya Pitham Kochi have discovered the mechanism of toxic action of cobra snake venom which can help mitigate the local toxic effects of cobra venom retained at the bite site. Cobras genus Naja are widely found in Asia and Africa and cobra bites cause major mortality and morbidity in these continents including the Indian subcontinent. The research, recently published in the journal Toxins, comprehensively discusses the mechanisms of action of cobra venom cytotoxins as well as their importance in cobra venom-induced pathophysiology and toxicity. The Union Minister for Science and Technology and Earth Sciences Dr. Jitendra Singh recently inaugurated the Young Startup Conclave organized by CSIR and DST in Katwa, Jammu and Kashmir. The Union Minister said that Jammu and Kashmir has a huge potential for agri-tech startups as the geographical and climatic conditions are favorable for the cultivation of medicinal and aromatic plants. Thus, there are several opportunities for young talent in this field. During his visit to the conclave, Dr. Singh visited the models set up by the students of various educational institutions of Katwa and the startup kiosks set up by entrepreneurs from Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Punjab and other states. Renowned entrepreneurs, industry experts, academicians, representatives of leading venture capital firms, incubators and accelerators and students participated in this conclave. The local progressive farmers also shared their success stories and experiences. The farmers expressed their gratitude to CSIR for its proper assistance and adequate support in their endeavors. Union Minister for Science and Technology and Earth Sciences Dr. Jitendra Singh held a high-level meeting with the Secretary of the Department of Biotechnology Dr. Rajesh Gokhale and other senior officers during the formal release of the intranasal COVID vaccine recently. During the meeting, the Union Minister said, in the last two years, India has succeeded in developing four indigenous vaccines against COVID-19 and this has been possible due to the steps taken by the Government of India under Mission COVID Suraksha. Among these is the world's first and India's indigenously developed DNA-based vaccine, Zykov-T, India's first protein subunit vaccine, Cobrivax, the world's first and India's indigenously developed mRNA vaccine, Gemcovac-19, and the indigenously developed intranasal COVID-19 vaccine, Incovac. He also acknowledged the way the Department of Biotechnology has strengthened infrastructure during the pandemic, making it easier for the country to deal with future challenges. That is all in today's edition of Science Monitor. Keep sending your feedback and suggestions through email. Our email ID is indiascience at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write into us at vigyanprasar, A50, Sector 62, Noida, 201, 309, Uttar Pradesh. So, we'll take your leave now. See you again next week. Till then, stay safe and think scientifically. Bye for now.